Today I want to show you how to install an electric choke kit on an Edelbrock Performer or AVS or Thunder Series carburetor and some tips and tricks on how to get it adjusted and put together correctly so you avoid some of the common little mistakes that you can make uh, doing these. I've done a lot of these over the years and there's a couple little things uh, that will help you make sure you get it right. First thing, uh, question I get asked all the time is, or comment I hear is, well, I don't need an electric choke. I live in Texas. I live in Florida. I live here in the Mid-South. It's always hot here. I don't need one. I would disagree with that. And even on a 50-degree morning, 60-degree morning, 70-degree morning, the car, the car needs to warm up just a little bit. And a little bit richer mixture will help do that. So a little bit of choke... Um, even if it's just for a minute or two as it's sitting there idling, warming up, it's always a good thing. A little bit extra fuel in the engine is good. It provides a little bit extra lubrication on the valve train uh, down into the engine. Not a problem at all to run a little bit richer. An electric choke takes all the guesswork out of it. You hook it up, you set it, you forget about it, you hit it, you get the key, and, and you go. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's not necessary, but... I always run electric choke on my street cars because really there's no performance benefit by removing the, the choke plate off the top. Uh, you're not going to increase the airflow by anything dramatic. And even if you did on the top side, you're going to restrict it through the Venturi uh, and the, the throttle bores. It's just not going to flow any more air through it or pull more air through it through the engine. So electric choke if a carburetor that I'm going to run doesn't have one, I always put one on there. Before we talk about the electric choke kit, I just want to show you the calibration kit that I also got with this. Um, if you've never seen one of these calibration kits, they're very, very simple. But what it does, if you remember the tuning chart back in the ultimate tuning guide that I did several months ago, uh, it shows all the rods and jet changes that you can make. The tuning kit has all of those rods and jets in that center shaded section. If you go back and watch that video again, you'll see how to use the tuning chart and that shaded section there, all the rods and jets are included in that kit, plus the step up springs that you need, depending on the vacuum of the engines, etc. So you can go back and take a look at that. I always buy a, I needed another kit uh, for this 800 CFM carburetor that I'm doing for the big block Chevelle. Uh, so I went ahead and bought one. Little tip here, is if you buy one from a friend, uh, buy one from an auto parts store, whatever, and this seal is broken on it, get another one. It's been opened up. You, who knows? If it's been opened up, somebody took the rod or the jet or the springs out of there that they wanted and threw back in whatever, and you're not going to get the right kit. Get one that's sealed up. So if you order it online, auto parts store, whatever, if it's sealed up, you're good to go. No problem. One cool thing here is if it is sealed up, you open it up and you find there's the wrong rod or jet in there. I've done this a number of times over the years. All you got to do is call Edelbrock, tell them what you're missing. They'll throw it in the mail to you at no charge. I've had have told tons of people to do that uh, when they need gaskets or missing things out of a carburetor kit. It happens. It's not the, you know, the most difficult kit to put together on the calibration kit but sometimes on the rebuild kits you can miss a gasket or put too much of one in there or whatever so anyway they're very 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 helpful when it comes to that so anyway i just want to show you the calibration kit when we get down the road here a couple of months when we get the engine and transmission everything back in the car uh we'll show you how to use the calibration kit and how to actually tune on an engine this carburetor but we'll get back to the installing the electric choke kit. So this is the electric choke kit from Edelbrock. Um, not overly complicated, very, very simple, but I'm going to show you how to, you know, what's in the packaging here, what you get, and then we're just going to kind of lay it all out, make it a little bit easier to uh, uh, put this thing together, assemble, and uh, move on down the road. Um, bottom section here, you know, you got all the basics. Um, you got a little hardware package that's got all the hardware that you're going to need. Um, typically it has everything. I've had one or two occasionally where they don't, they're missing a piece. Uh, the wire, ground wire, and the hot wire uh, for the two sides that uh, needs to be wired up. Um, both those are included here in the bottom side as well. 
um, also with this kit uh, is a full set of instructions. Now they're they're very simple. They're very basic. They're not again nothing here is complicated, but you have to kind of keep flipping around on this one. I've noticed. I've just relooked at these again. I haven't seen these instructions in quite a long time, but you know they're not the clearest. They do leave out a few little details, so it's best to, uh, you know, just kind of follow along with this video, and I'll get you all the right steps to get this thing put together. And the rest of the kit pieces here, you get the main body that attaches to the carburetor, you get the new sub-assembly shaft that goes through the carburetor, and you get the uh, electric uh, choke cap, housing cap that has the spring in it, plus a little gasket and a little... Uh, you know, baffle plate that goes in there to kind of protect it all. Now the black choke cap has some, has the wiring connections that go on there, the positive and negative, but it also has a nice little uh, directional arrow on there to tell you how to lean it out, lean the choke out or rich it up a little bit. You know, you turn one way, it goes lean, turn away another, it, it goes rich. I'll show you that here once we get it all put together. But that spring that's in there attaches to the little uh, arm or rod that comes out of the main body. Uh, and that spring rides on there. And as the uh, uh, choke warms up, uh, engine warms up, uh, changes the temperature within it, um, that spring pressure changes and uh, you uh, loosen up, um, you know, loosen up the choke and you go from closed choke wherever you set that to, to wide open choke. So anyway, very, very simple, very easy to adjust. If you ever forget, uh, those things are right there on the body of the choke. Now, before I start to disassemble this, when I did the live stream on the rebuild of this, putting it back together, I think I said that I left off the little choke arm that goes on here. It just holds on the choke cable. If you're in a manual choke, it would go right here. It's gone. It's not on there anymore. So just wanted to point that out. Now let's get into disassembling it. The first thing you got to do is disconnect the choke plate from the shaft that goes through the center of the carburetor. Now this one's a 3 16 I think, um, maybe a quarter inch uh, size. I have little wrenches here, but I've got nut drivers as well too. Not complicated. It's very, very easy. They're, they shouldn't be in there very tight, uh, but you will need a little tool to, uh, to get these out of there. And once you get that screw out of there, just remove it and the little connecting rod that attaches to the choke flap. Set that aside. You're going to need that in just a minute. And once that comes out, the subshaft uh, assembly needs to come out of there. Now there's a little tiny quarter inch screw that's on the side here. It's a one time use only deal. Um, they tell you because that once it goes in uh, and you back it back out, um, the threads are a little uh, uh, boogered up at that point. And uh, I have seen them back off, but a little bit of Loctite cures that. But uh, once you get that um, uh, little plate and the screw out of there, uh, then you just need to dis disconnect the little connecting rod that's on the other side of the carburetor for the fast idle side of things. And uh, once that comes out of there, then you can slide the sub or that shaft assembly completely out of the carburetor. Now, if you ever get these two mixed up, there's a pretty easy way to tell which one's which. The one for the electric choke has a smaller uh, face on the end, and all it does is just is there to catch the little uh, new plate that goes on there and attaches to the electric choke. So you'll see how that goes together, but uh, uh, the one on the uh, left is the uh, old one, and the one on the right is the new electric choke one. And that's it. You're ready to go back together. Now, in the hardware bag here, there is a little lever. Uh, it's a, They label it in there. It's a part number 14-555. Uh, it goes on the uh, end of the rod here. And this is the end uh, that it connects to the fast idle side of the carburetor. In the hardware bag, there's a new linkage rod, screw, and a little washer. Now, the washer is kind of a hit or miss. You can use it in there. You know, if that um, if you've got the room for it, I'm going to try it on this one. But I'll tell you, almost 95 percent of the time I leave it out of there. But it's in the bag. I want to show it to you. If it doesn't work out, we'll know pretty quickly because it'll bind up the linkage. Um, but we're going to run into a little problem here in just a quick minute. And I'll show you that. Here's a great example of something that can go wrong. Now, these, like I said, are a little self-tapping screw that goes into the end of this thing. And once you start to tighten that down, if it's a little 
got a little bit of a drag on it, a little more difficult, then yeah, it's probably okay. In this instance, it was a little tighter than normal, and I just went ahead and continued to screw it, screw it down. The problem with that is, is it's a very, very small little screw, um, and not a lot of torque will destroy it, and that's what I did. I popped the head right off of it, um, and off it came. So you have to be a little careful with these things. If it feels like it's a little too tight, you know, it's okay. If it's just a little snug, no problem. If it's in this case where it was way too tight, you just go ahead and back it out and start over and you'll save yourself uh, the problem here. Fortunately, I had another uh, rod uh, or excuse me, shaft and another carburetor. I just stole a lot of that ABS carburetor in the back and we'll just keep moving on. Next, we're going to attach the choke housing to the body of the carburetor. Now, there's a couple of things here. There's a little seal that goes in here uh, on the side of the body. Um, that's to seal it up against the body of the carburetor because there's a vacuum port that we're going to tap into. Uh, and before we do that, on the body of the carburetor, if it didn't have an electric choke on there before, there's a little brass plug that you need to kind of work, work out of there. Um, so just get a pair of pliers and kind of wiggle them back and forth, put a little bit of pressure on it, and it'll pop right out. Once that little brass plug comes out of the side there, you can see the little vacuum port here on the side of the carburetor. If there's any garbage in there, just make sure you blow it out of there before you attach the choke body to it. Now back in the little hardware bag, you know, there's a little rubber seal that goes to the choke body to seal it up against that vacuum port that's on the body of the carburetor. So hook up the little connecting rod here. Make sure the piston and the rod move uh, nice and easy. That's all you're doing is just making sure that it doesn't bind at all. Uh, and then attach the little rubber uh, gasket onto the choke body. And we're going to attach the body onto the body of the carburetor here in just a second. Now, back into the little hardware bag, there's two sets of three screws. What we're looking for to attach the body of the choke to the body of the carburetor is the three self-tapping screws. And they're a little bit longer, and you can kind of see the little self-tapper on the end. That's what we need. If you have a carburetor that's never been attached, or a choke that's never been attached to a carburetor, the little self-tappers will uh, dig its way into the aluminum of the body and uh, allow it to attach itself. If it's had electric choke on there before, doesn't matter, you can still use them. So what we're trying to do here is just make sure that the seal is on there, the gasket's on there, and that the connecting rod is in the right position to connect up to the uh, choke lever on the carburetor. So once you get all that done, it's just a matter of placing the body directly on there, check the gasket again, and start the self-tappers. Now, once I get these just a little bit in there, so the body just wiggles around in there, just take another quick peek at the gasket for one to make sure it didn't slip out of there. If it's good, then you're okay. And then also check the connecting rod coming out of there that you didn't bind it up against the body of the carburetor. Done that enough times in the past. Um, if that's good, if the little uh, gasket's in there uh, and good to go and you can move the little connecting rod, you're ready to finish up the assembly here. Once you got the choke body all snug down, next thing you gotta do is put on this little uh, uh, baffle plate and uh, gasket and the choke cap. Now, there's a little indentation in this baffle plate uh, that only goes one way. It fits down into the little hole that the uh, one of the little self-tappers went into and the slot uh, goes up there on top with a piston. So you'll figure out how that, that kind of goes in there, but it just kind of falls right in there. Now, once you get the body of the choke on there, what you're trying to do is to get the little leverage rod um, a kind of twisted around to where it comes in contact with the spring. And you'll know this because when you turn the cap on the choke body, you'll move the little connecting rod that closes the choke uh, flap closed. So what I do is just once you get it set in there and, and you can kind of go back and forth with it as you're turning the choke cap just as that little uh, connecting rod starts to move that's where I'll snug it down at. You can make the final adjustment uh, when you're done but that way you'll get 
um, get it all, uh, you know, connected. Uh, you'll have it in there, um, you know, right. And you won't have to, you know, twist the thing around quite a bit and kind of wonder if you got it off. But uh, that's the easiest way to do it. It's a, just a little trick on how I do it to make sure, you know, that it gets put together right. So once you twist it around there, the connecting rod starts to move a little bit, snug it down, and then we'll do the final adjustment here in just a second. Now the remaining three little screws that you had uh, and these little tabs, uh, the last little pieces in the hardware kit are what hold the uh, choke cap down. So they just kind of hang on there. You know, don't worry. They don't really, you know, fit on their flush. But, uh, you know, what it does just kind of grabs hold of the cap a little bit and you just need to snug these down. Don't need to tighten these down very tight. Nothing on this carburetor really needs to be tightened down very tight. So you're just snugging it down. It will hold that cap in, in place. Uh, and, uh, you know, like I said, you, just, you don't need to torque it down. It'll be just fine, just snug. And the last thing we need to do is take this little connecting rod, hook it up from the uh, shaft assembly that goes through, and hook it back up to the choke plate on top. So a little 3 16 nut driver, snug it on down and you're good to go. Now we've got one more um, rod to connect here on the uh, side of the carburetor where the fast idle side is. So again, one last connecting rod, hook it up, little slot, and then uh, um, hook it back up to the top side uh, and put the little uh, retaining clip in and you're done. Uh, once that's all hooked up, then just need to just check the operation, make sure everything moves smoothly, that the fast idle, you know, uh, works okay, moves okay. Uh, that little connecting rod uh, is in there correctly. Uh, and then just check the function of the choke plate, the, the shaft going through there. Just make sure nothing binds, nothing grabs. Once you're done with that, now we can do the final adjustment on the choke assembly before it goes onto the vehicle. Now, once it's on the vehicle, we'll adjust it a little, uh, little bit more, and you can self-tune it or fine-tune it uh, whenever you need to. But uh, um, all we're going to do is we're going to rotate or uh, you know move everything, make sure everything's kind of loose and free and kind of settled where it needs to be. And then all you got to do is... Uh, put the uh, fast idle cam all the way on the choke plate will you'll see here it's just open just a little bit and then we will uh, loosen up the cap and then twist the cap a little bit uh, close the choke plate now I usually will set this so it's closed all the way and then once I get it um, on the car and uh, see how it runs with full choke um, you can kind of adjust it from there. So we'll go ahead and uh, re-loosen those little screws on the choke body. Now, if you remember right, we uh, had this already set on there, so we know the spring is in contact with the little piston rod that's in the choke body. So all you got to do from here is just rotate that uh, um, the choke housing a little bit, and it will close the, uh, the choke plate down just a little bit uh, right where you need to. So... Uh, once that's done uh, and you get this kind of set where you want it, like I said, I close it so so it's almost all the way closed, um, then you're done. Just snug it back down and you're good to go. And the last little thing here is the two wires that go to the electric choke. Now that's a ground activated system, so you got a ground wire and a key on hot wire that goes to it, meaning hit the key in the ignition, uh, the ground activates and you've got power to the choke. Nothing you can do with it here. Just set them aside. You're going to, you know, play with it when you get, once you get it back on the car, uh, and get the ground and the key on, uh, uh, wire set. Um, one last little quick thing here is just to kind of like, again, do another little functions check, make sure none of those rods are bound up, connecting rods are bound up and, uh, you know, the, everything functions, uh, normally these these carburetors are not complicated to work on. They get a lot of bad rap for whatever reason, and I'm almost 100% certain that it's because people just don't know how to adjust them. They think they're hard or complicated or difficult. They're not. If you follow just the basics of what I've had in these um, Edelbrock videos on how to rebuild the ultimate tuning guide, um, how to identify the carburetor, and then now this one with the electric choke, you'll see that they're really, really simple. 
great running street carburetor, really, really lots of trouble free miles. They don't leak. They don't lose adjustment. You know, dirt affects them a little bit, but dirt affects every carburetor and you're going to have all those, you know, issues with anything. So if you've got any questions, don't hesitate, leave them down below. I'd love to answer them. For sure, you know, thanks for uh, watching the video and, and uh, you know, for sure subscribe and, and like it if you thought it was cool. And uh, I guess we'll catch you on the next video. Next time you'll see this carburetor will be on a big block in the uh, 67 Chevelle. See you guys.